Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a literal equation when you actually have a linear equation in standard form. Now, this one actually is not in standard form, but I figured I'd just throw one in because I had an extra spot. Uh, throw one in with fractions and just to kind of use, we're going to use the same kind of process, but it's not actually in standard form. Um, however, you can see that what I have is this little semicolon here to represent the variable that we're going to solve for. Now, in all of these examples, we're going to solve for y. And why we always solve for y? Well, because technically, uh, when you get into you know, solving and, or by graphing linear equations, when we have something in standard form, we most commonly want to solve for y. So that's what we're going to practice um, in this video. So basically, when we're solving literal equations, um, what we're doing is now we're going to have more than technically one variable. And so what we need to do is identify the variable that we're solving for. And again, as I mentioned, I have identified the variable that we're going to solve for. So therefore, all we're going to do is use, we're going to isolate that variable, which is y, by using our inverse operations. Now, the difficult thing with literal equations is, as compared to just regular um, one variable equations, is a lot of times when we're like combining like terms or operations, we can't because we don't have like terms, right? You can't. You can only combine you know, variables. You can only combine numbers or variables that are like terms and numbers with numbers. You can't combine a number with the variable. So we just have to keep in mind that when we're going through and simplifying. Now, I don't know why I wrote this one first, but I'm actually going to start with these two. So a lot of times when doing a, um, a literal equation, um, I like to circle the variable. Now, it's not really as necessary here because you know, there's only two variables, y and x. But I'm going to do it for the first problem just so you can see. So I've circled the variable. And what that's going to do is actually it's going to call pinning the variable. And what I'm doing is basically thinking about like pinning that variable to, uh, to the board, meaning that variable, is, that variable is not going to move from its position here on the left-hand side. So therefore, now to solve for this, I just need to undo everything that's happening to that variable. So you can see my variable y is being multiplied by 2. So to undo multiplying by 2, all I simply need to do is divide by 2. So by dividing by 2, I am now left with y equals 6x plus 4 divided by 2. Now, um, that is correct, but we like to simplify our answer, especially putting it in slope-intercept form, because that's basically why we're doing this, is to practice putting it in slope-intercept form. So therefore, the 6x is being divided by 2, as well as the 4 is being divided by 2. So if I distribute that 2 into both of those, I'll, I will obtain a final answer of 3x plus 2. All right, in this example, um, again, actually, let's just pin it again. In this example, I'm going to pin my y here. And you can see now um, I want to solve, ooh, that's a good one. So here I have y um, is being, sub or 3x, I'm subtracting 3x from y. So therefore, to undo subtracting 3x, I am going to add a 3x to both sides. Now, unlike multiplication and division, you can divide a variable. Um, and it's coefficient by 2. You can multiply by 2, right? You can multiply divide. However, you cannot add a variable with its coefficient to a whole number, or just to any number. So therefore, y equals, I'm going to leave it like this, negative 7 plus 3x. You can't combine them, so we just leave it there. And again, we want to rewrite this in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to switch these, because slope-intercept form is with the variable before the constant. So my final answer would be y equals a positive 3x minus 7. I don't need to continue writing the uh, addition sign. So now let's go back over to this problem here. And you can see now what we're trying to do is, again, we're trying to solve for y. Actually, let's, I like pinning it. I'll do it for our first three examples. So now you can see I have multiple operations that's happening to my y. My y is being multiplied by 2, and it's being added by 4. Again, we just need to follow our forms. Using our inverse operations for two-step equations, we always undo addition and subtraction first. So. You can see that my 4x is actually being added, because that's a positive 4. So to undo a positive 4x, I'm going to subtract the 4x on both sides. That's just going to leave me with a 2y is equal to, now again, I am going to rewrite the 3x in front of the, um, the negative 4x in front of the 8. And you can't combine them, so it just becomes negative 4x plus 8. Now you can see my variable y is being multiplied by 2. So to undo multiplying by 2, I'm going to divide by 2. And rather than having to show you all the steps, I'm just going to initially divide the 2 into a negative 4x, as well as to divide the 2 into the 8. So negative 4x divided by 2, you just divide the 2 into the negative 4. That gives you a negative 2x plus 4. OK, so now let's just kind of work on um, our last couple examples here. Again, here you can see that my y is being multiplied by negative 3, and it's being now subtracted by negative 2x. 
so again, using my inverse operations, instead of um, subtracting like I had to do here, since that's a negative, I'm going to have to add a 2x. Then I'm left with a negative 3y equals 2x plus 48. Now my y is being uh, multiplied by negative 3, so I'll divide by negative 3 on both sides. And now I have y equals. Now here, negative 3 doesn't divide into 2, so I'm going to leave that as a fraction. So it's going to become a negative 2 thirds x, but negative 3 does go into 48, and that's going to be negative 16 times. Over here, again, now you can see my variable y is being multiplied by negative 2 and is being added by 5x. So to undo the adding 5x, uh, oops, can't undo adding by adding, you have to subtract 5x. Therefore, I'm left with a negative 2y equals, but a negative 2y equals da, 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 um, negative 5x plus 7, because that's a positive 7, so I'm going to put the addition sign. Then, to undo multiplying by negative 2, I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. Here, you can see that the negative 2 doesn't divide into either of those. However, again, to rewrite this in slope-intercept form, I am going to rewrite them as fractions. So that's going to be a positive 5 halves x minus 7 halves. Okay, Because 7 divided by negative 2 can be rewritten as a negative 7 halves. All right, in the last example, we're going to be doing the exact same thing, except now we have some fractions. So we're just going to make things a little bit more complicated. But I figure students like doing problems with fractions or like seeing problems with fractions because they hate doing them themselves. So the main important thing here is, again, just using your inverse operations. Now y is being multiplied by my fraction 2 sevenths, and it's being added by 1. So the first thing I'm going to undo is subtract a 1 on both sides. So now I have x minus 1 equals 2 sevenths y. Now, to get rid of your fraction, you could say, well, your variable is being multiplied by 2 sevenths, so you can divide by 2 sevenths. A lot of people don't like dividing by fractions, so we always think of it as multiplying by your reciprocal. So what I'm going to do is multiply by my reciprocal on both sides. Now, make sure when you're multiplying by your reciprocal on both sides, you're not just multiplying the x by 7 halves. You're multiplying the x minus 1. Okay? Therefore, I have to apply distributive property, so I, I obtain 7 halves x minus 7 halves equals that now multiplies into 1. So you can see now it looks like slope intercept form, but it's actually not rewritten. So let's rewrite it now so it's actually in the format. So I'm going to rewrite the y to the left hand side. And then I'm going to rewrite this just as it is 7 halves x minus 7 halves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a literal equation when you have or a literal equation when you have a linear equation in standard form to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. Thanks.